that's fun. This is such a fun time when these wish books or toy catalogs start showing up in your mailbox. But you might be thinking, or at least I am, where does a tradition like this show up? And the very first catalog in the United States where you were selling goods actually was from Benjamin Franklin in 1744. The one you're more familiar with this time of year was in 1933. The Sears Roebuck Company put the first catalog like that out. In fact, they knew this was going to be such a big deal, they ended up copywriting the phrase, wish book. A couple years after that, in the 50s, Neiman Marcus shows up with a new type of catalog. And a bit of trivia, they actually had a holiday catalog before Sears did, but no one actually knew about it because they weren't marketing it properly. But they finally get on a mass medium, they get on radio, and Stanley Marcus of Neiman Marcus is doing that interview with Edward Morrow. And the legendary Morrow turns to Stanley and says, hey, what in this catalog is extraordinary for our listeners? And as the mythology goes, on the spot, Stanley invented a deal where you could get a black Angus bull, yes, a full-size cow, and a sterling silver barbecue cart for $2,000. Thus, the adult version of the toy catalog was born, because each and every year they have crazier and crazier deals in these Neiman Marcus catalogs. Fast forward a couple years to 1956, the very first Toys R Us shows up, and now you have a new player in the toy catalog landscape for kids to circle and draw on and show Santa exactly what they want. Which about catches you up on the history of wish books? Which brings us back to this. While this isn't an endorsement for Amazon, because quite frankly they don't need it, it is an illustration of what kids find delightful about this season, right? It's the anticipation, it's the imagination, it's the just sheer joy to look through something like this. So what can we learn about Amazon's wish book? Well, the first thing is the use of margins. In this book, they do a great job of leaving big margins so kids can circle with markers or crayons the single thing that they need instead of some of what you see is the layout is all of the products are on top of one another, which makes it very difficult for a child to circle a single item when they're piled on top of each other. The next thing is that they've got a physical list inside. And on the back side of that physical list is a recipe for kids to make their own hot cocoa. And as you go through, there's mazes, there's coloring, there's crafts, and all of that stuff keeps kids coming back again and again to use this wish book instead of look through it once and toss it in the trash. And most importantly, it teaches you how you can create magic out of something as simple as a piece of paper. And when a kid gets this in the mail, that's exactly what they feel. Magic, that anticipation, the joy of going through something like this. Now, is the season all about buying the things? No, not particularly, at least for me. But what it is about is magic. And when you look inside of a wish, there's a whole lot of magic you can find there. All right, friends, we'll talk soon.